I've been waiting that long, I might need to go for another pee again. <laughs> Cheeky bastard. <laughs> <laughs> How's the Ian's getting on? Pain in the fucking hoop, but that's what you sign up for. <laughs> exactly, mate, you're not getting any sympathy for me whatsoever, I'm afraid. <laughs> oh dear, is it that bad? Aye, just oh no listening God. to a thing, but we'll see. What did you say? No listening to a thing, but we'll see. <laughs> you're a <laughs> Dave, oh, I'm highly strong. I don't need you <laughs> fucking. <laughs> and I think though that the big, eh, I'll say that again. But the difference between the two, I'll say that again. Fuck's sake. <laughs> In the second half, a subdued second, second, a sub. Oh, fuck's sake. <laughs> Getting a, 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 a his uh, first chance at a, a start, first chance at a, in a Rangers top, uh, yeah. and his first. Oh, say that again. R- Raskin, <laughs> get fucking hell, Dave. In the stadium erupts in red, white, and blue. You've never seen anything like it. Let's go. Hi everyone and welcome to the next episode of the iReady podcast. As ever, I'm your host Derek, with me is my co-host Dave. How are you doing Dave? Derek, I'm very well mate, how's yourself? I'm very good, Wind Dundee and Aberdeen fans oh, of all people, you know. Goodness. Well I was about to say Derek, just to, hold on to uh, open my fresh can of Pepsi Max and I was just have, having a wee think there Derek, that's been what, 10 years just about that we've been doing this podcast and Pepsi and Pepsi Max are shout out nearly every single episode and all we've heard for them is a like uh, all the years uh, all the tweets and everything like that and then it dawned on, on me today I thought maybe the guys in charge of the social media were all for the green and white sort of section <laughs> of Glasgow but it turns out today they could be Dundee or Aberdeen fans <laughs> going by the, the abuse that you've got the listeners out there if they maybe don't know both Derek and I have got shared access to our Twitter account and I just know when I see all the notifications coming up on my phone that Derek has been at the wind-up either with the green and white mob or somebody else, and that's certainly what happened today, Derek. And you got a lot of bites, didn't you? Being honest, Dave, the first thing that goes through your mind is, oh, what the fuck's he done now? Exactly. That is exactly (laughs) what I say. But usually it is winding up supporters of a certain team in Scotland. But today, it was they were all jumping on the bandwagon, weren't they? I mean, it's unbelievable that how people can try and link a financial crisis at Man City to Rangers once again. You know, it happens all the time, and for Dundee fans and for Aberdeen fans to ha- try and have a go at me as a Rangers fan for the lack of trophies is just absolutely... <laughs> I couldn't have let that one go. De- so, De- Derek, the thing that got me about the Dundee fan was he obviously has to been a Dundee fan for very long or has got a very short memory with all the dodgy... Sorry alleged dodgy goings on with a certain ex-owner who's, you know, a certain, <laughs> uh, a who's certain in jail. Lo- lawyer out, out there that we all know and a lot of alleged goings on that went on at that club when he was there. So he's either a very, very young guy that doesn't know anything about the recent past they Dundee or he's just thick as fuck. But never mind, and we'll, we'll, we'll move on for them, Derek. Or all that information was in his junk inbox, so... Possibly, possibly. Yeah. I, you know these junk emails, eh? Dund- <laughs> Dundee. <laughs> Maybe like junkies in Dundee, but that's another story. <laughs> another story. Yes, we'll move on from that now because we've got a lot to talk about. But we've obviously got to talk about, unfortunately, the sad passing of yeah. former player and goalkeeping coach Billy Thompson, who has passed away at the age of 64. Uh, it's no age at all, Dave, is it? It really wasn't. I was really shocked this morning. I started seeing some of the Twitter acknowledgements coming through and I couldn't quite believe it. Only 64 years old. You know, he's very well known in Scottish football, St Mirren, Dundee United and of course ourselves later in his career. He went on to be a coach as well and, you know, very well respected by the vast majority of players and supporters that that, that, that were around w- w- when he was playing. And as you said there, just another tragic passing of an ex-player far too young. Exactly. So thoughts are obviously with his friends and family at this moment. Yeah, definitely. 
moving on from that, we've obviously got to talk about the, the transfers, Dave. Yes. The clock is ticking. The window is about to slam shut. Ones that have been getting r- rumoured for ages. I never saw, I kept my mouth closed for, for once. It was you that was talking about it, so I'll let you kick this one off. Yes, so Todd Cantwell, at age 24, has signed on, a, I think, it's a four-and-a-half-year deal from Norwich. Yes. And obviously, Nicholas Raskin, age 21, I think it's also a four-and-a-half-year deal from Standard Liège. We've paid, allegedly, I paid around about £1.6 million for him, plus a 20% sell. So it's certainly a big outlay for someone who had six months to go on his deal, yeah. but apparently he hadn't signed a pre-contract like was first reported. And I can see why we've paid that, especially if he's apparently as good as we're told he is. Obviously, we've only, we'll get into it, we've seen Todd Cantwell a couple of times and he looks the part. Uh, Raskin, we've only seen about five minutes here in the last game there, but certainly the four or five things he'd done, but he exactly. was, looked, looked pretty good. So all's, all's looking good so far. It does, Derek. He does come, you know, glowing report before we signed him everybody was desperate to sign him, I can't say I'm no like all that mob for the other side of the road that'll tell you that I'm an expert in football from other countries, I don't know much about Belgian league football but we all know that it is a very good standard and if he's one of the star players in Belgium at age 21 and we're getting him and he's a Belgian under 20 uh, international and he must be a, a good player and it, just like what you said Derek we'll get into the wee glimpses that we got him um, certainly looked as if he's going to be a capable player for us. Yeah, I mean, it's one of these things where we've had world-class players come to us before and we've really they've been dire and for whatever reason it's just not worked out and we've had players that have been came with no name at all have been dire with us and went on to bigger and better things so it's sometimes you just need to wait and see what happens so I'm not going to make any predictions about how, how good they're going to be we also were in for apparently Morgan Whitaker from Swansea we were in talks with them they, they recalled him from loan he was named in their squad presumably to play hardball with us he said he wasn't in the right frame of mind to play, so he was with the squad and then talks collapsed. Our former player and a manager who was linked with us at one time, Russell Martin, was talking about it at the weekend and in the presser, he said that he's had Rangers fans message him on link to say let him go. Martin then apologised and saying it's sorry crap at your club, but it's not my decision. <laughs> Bizarre, but utterly fantastic. <laughs> it really was. Derek, he's He's no lying. <laughs> <laughs> At least he acknowledges it, Derek. At least he acknowledges it. And also, they uh, got a last minute winner against them as well. So that's a bit of karma there. Well, yeah. Yeah, uh, outgoings. We only had a, only had one actually, didn't we? It was Charlie McCann who goes to Forest Green Rovers for an undisclosed fee. Sad to see that he couldn't break into the squad further, but when he couldn't make an impact in in a threadbare midfield. It's maybe best that he moves on at this point, but we wish him well and nonetheless. Yeah, well, yeah. One rumour that didn't actually transpire towards the end of the transfer window was Alex Lowry was meant to be going out on loan. Beal did confirm that if he does go out on loan, it is not going to be for a permanent deal. However, nothing transpired. For me, he needs to start getting a game as he's getting yep. absolutely wasted in the B team. He's far yep. too good for them. Given we've just signed two midfielders, Hadji's also making a comeback. I actually do fear for him at us because... For me, if he doesn't make it, he's got all the talent in the world right there. He just needs that game time. But if he doesn't make it in our squad, it's another failure for the academy for me. He's a he's a quality player, Derek. Uh, I mean, I, I don't think the laddie has ever not made an impact when he's been playing for the first team. He's always looked a class act. He's always looked like one of the best players on the park when he's came in. I realise he's bad, he's bad injury. I'm very surprised that he's not featured more. But exactly like you said, Getting Hadji back, the new players that are coming in, the new signings that are playing as sort of more creative forward mid- midfielders, it's going to be difficult for them. And I think a loan move to another Premier League club would have been ideal for. Him. But as you say, it never transpired. It was, I think, it was Ross County at one stage that he was getting linked with, which would have been a great move. He might have been able to flourish, but as you say, only time will tell how much game time he's actually going to get. Yep. So we'll now go down the tunnel and onto the park. Four games to cover, four wins, Dave. That must be one of the very few occasions when we've been doing this that we've had that amount of games and we've all won. Exactly. 
So the first game we've got to cover was Saturday the 21st of January. It was a 1-0 win away against St. Johnson in the fourth round of the Scottish Cup. Three changes from the previous Kilmarnock game. McLaughlin, Kamara and Arfield benched and replaced by McGregor, Jack and Tillman. So we had McGregor, Tavernier, Gold. Davis, Barisic, Lundstrom, Jack, Tillman, Kent, Sakala and Morelos. On the subs bench were McLaughlin, Cholak, Kamara, Sands, Wright, Arfield, King, Devine and Lowry. Now, first half, it was really a cup tie performance, just <laughs> as much as you can say. Nothing happened for either team. No keeper had anything of note to deal with. Scrappy and pedestrian from us. We were on top, bar maybe about 10 minutes, and really out of nothing in the 45th minute, a stunning piece of play ending our goal for Barisic for what was his first goal in two years, and what a strike to do it in. Certainly was. Yes. It was a lovely move with a back heel at the touchline on the right-hand side, right to Sakala, who gets into the box on the right, a couple of touches, a great shot at an angle, rattles the outside of the far post. The ball then travels out to Barisic on the left-hand side, just inside the box and a stunning shot into the back of the net brilliant absolutely superb Derek and we've said that already ever since Barisic has came back from the World Cup he looks a much more assured player doesn't he and that was certainly a phenomenal strike instinctive hit by him we know he can hit the ball like that and uh, just he hit it absolutely perfectly sweet into the back of the net and you know absolutely tremendous goal and a great time for us scoring as well yeah, absolutely, and I'm pretty sure I read that's his first goal for us anyway uh, out of open play. It's always been normally free kicks he's scored. Okay, so. okay. Yeah. so into the second half, again a scrappy performance, but we were in control bar the last 10 minutes. We had a great chance on the 57th minute. It was a corner from the right. Golson with a bullet header and a stunning one-handed save by the keeper. Substitutions on the 66th minute. Tillman and Sakala off, Kamara and Wright off. On the 79th minute, the ball was on the right, worked to right on the edge of the box, who has a great shot and an even better state save and out for the corner. I think it was from that corner on the 79th minute as well. Morelos gets the ball in the box from a long ball from Kent. He chests it down, controls it with his other foot, gets a shot off, but blocked and cleared off the line. So unlucky that there. Yeah. 81st minute, St Johnson on the right, cross into the box, which took a slight deflection, burst of pace from the attacker to get in front of Davis, has a shot and cleared off the line by Tavernier. First proper chance for St Johnson in the whole game. Really. That's right, Derek. But again, still only 1 0, you know killed the game off at that stage to still really rope it. Yeah, and you know, to have to clear it off the line as well, which was dangerous. Yep. 83rd minute, Kent off and Lowry on. 87th minute, Morelis with a shot over the bar after a lovely pass from Lowry. 89th minute, Nicky Clark with a volley from the edge of the box, right at McGregor, but hit with pace and had to take two bites at it. 90th minute, St Johnson with a lot of pressure around our box. We just couldn't clear it properly. It was eventually smothered by McGregor. 92nd minute, right again going for goal and loses out, instigating a counter-attack. Again, nine minutes of the game from right. 1-0 yeah. up. Well, they were on the ascendancy, not taking it out to the corner. Poor from right. Yep. And then to basically waste time on the 93rd minute, Morelis and Jack off, Cholak and Arfield on, and that's how the game ended up. So it certainly wasn't pretty. We'd done that. A lot of the hard work, we had most of the possession, we just never created that many chances. Granted, a couple of stunning saves from their keeper, but as I said right at the start, it was a cup tie performance. Win it by any means necessary, yeah. progress through to the next round, which was what we done. A hundred percent potential banana skin in that game, Derek, especially with St John. Recent successes that they've had with Callum Davidson as their manager, so that could have been a really tricky one for us. So just glad to get out of there with the win. And as you say, on to the next game. Yes. And that next game, funnily enough, was again against St. Johnson. This time at Ibrox. It was on Saturday the 28th of January in the Premiership. And we won 2-0. Not without its controversy though, Dave, was it? Definitely not, no. <laughs> yes, so two changes from the Scottish Cup game against them. We lined up McGregor, Tavernier, Goldson, Davis, Barisic, Kamara, Jack, Tillman, Kent, Cantwell and Morelis. On the subs bench were McLaughlin, Lundstrom, Hadji, Cholak, Sands, Wright, Sakala, Arfield and Devine. So Cantwell getting a start. Yeah, quite surprised about that, Derek. I thought he'd have been on as a sub, but shows the faith that the manager's got in the new signing. Yes. A couple of interesting things here. It was Armed Forces Day, so the abseil from down from the Sandy Jardin stand to present the ball and we had the, all the troops at half time as well which was always great to see also we'll get into it a wee bit later on is Edmondston House opened so it was yeah. looks cracking decent prices no heavy beers though that's the unfortunate <laughs> thing 
So the first half, we completely dominated the first half, been on the front foot, forward thinking, played in the St. Johnson half, St. Johnson keeper making a couple of really good saves, but we couldn't put the game to bed early and that nearly cost us in the last touch of the first half. Morelos was getting chances, but taking one too many touches at times where an informed Morelos would have just buried it first time, wouldn't he have taken one touch and then hit, his, hit it in the back of the net with his second, but maybe overthinking th- a few times. Eh? However, on the 14th, we got those three words that you always love to hear, penalty to Rangers. Yeah. The ball was floated into the St. Johnston box from the right, appeared to hit off the back of Goldson, I think it was, and it hits off the outstretched arm of the defender, which was in an unnatural position. However, Dave, I was under the impression that if it deflected off a player, especially at such close range, and it hit somebody's hand, it wasn't a penalty. I kind of don't understand why that was given. (laughs) Derek, I am flummoxed uh, at at the moment. There's far too many people. I think that's the the danger with social media. I read far too many reports and tweets what people think the rules are what the rules actually are and I'm very confused by the whole thing. I also was under the the impression that if it hit off another body part and it was on then it wasn't deemed to be but then some of the other referees are saying you know that's not the case and if they are I'm in an unnatural position regardless it is a penalty so I'm confused. Yeah absolutely. However on the 15th minute up steps Tavernier high into the left side and Made it 1 0. Just yeah. on that penalty, though, VAR check. VAR does with every decision and they allowed it. So, a uh, bit of a strange one, that. But Tavenier scored the penalty nonetheless and we 1 0. Yes. Now, the first moment of major controversy here because on the 34th minute, it was a straight red card for Nicky Clark after a VAR decision. He did get the ball when he was going in for it. He was leaning back, but he caught Jack with the studs just below the knee as well. What appeared to transpire, I initially thought it was, and I said in the post-match that he gave a yellow card and VAR upgraded it. No, he was given a straight red card. Yep. So from what I've heard is that Willie Collum gave the red card. He then signalled to VAR because he thought it was a red card. So he's given the, the red card, then VAR have backed it up. Whereas what we've seen in the past is that if VAR were to rescind that and say it wasn't a yellow card, they would have told them to go and check the screen. But he never done so there's basically a referee on the park and the and panel of referees uh-huh. have decided that's a red card. Yep. For me, I've seen the whole range of things given mm. for that. I've seen it given as not a foul. I've seen it given as no cards. I've seen it given as yellows. I've seen it given as reds. That'll lead us on to what we're going to get into now. So on the 37th minute, Jack was given a yellow card for going for the ball, a mistimed challenge. His studs were down. He did connect with the, the, the kind of ankle of the, the, the player but a yellow card was given. It was stupidity from Jack, I've got to say, because he's maybe a bit bloodied for getting that challenge just on him. He was wanting a bit of retribution, maybe, to not even a player that done it. He was already off the field. I thought that was stupid at the time, and I was expecting a red, Dave. But Vars checked it, and Colm decides not to upgrade. So The way that I looked at both, Derek, I when I first saw... Nicky Clark's challenge, I thought it was harsh when I first saw it, when, you know, in actual live play, I thought it was harsh, it didn't look too bad. Looking at the, the, the replay, you could quite clearly see studs were up, you could clearly see he got the man, even though he was going for the ball, and it was a dangerous tackle. Now, if it had been a yellow card, we would have went, oh, aye, 100%. Red card, we were all like, oh aye, well it was because it was dangerous. Looking at Ryan Jack's rash again, Derek, exactly what you said, hot-headed, still pissed off with, with, with the challenge, being a silly boy, but not as dangerous as the one that Nicky Clark had done before. So I think the referee got it right with a yellow card. But like I said, Clark's could have been a yellow, but certainly more dangerous than what Ryan Jack's was. I agree with you 100%, Derek. Jack saw red mist and was a silly boy. And, you know, we all know what Willie Collins like. He doesn't really go for what the official rules are. He goes for what Willie Collins' rules are and he likes to be the star attraction of the game like he was again today. He's gave a yellow card, so I was happy with that, Derek. And, you know, as we see later on, Jack, I think, was taken off not long after that because I think Michael Beale could possibly see what could have turned into a worse situation <laughs> for him. But bear in mind, Willie Collum did actually go to the VAR screen to check that, which generally, if referees do that, it means they're going to overturn their decision or, or rule against 
what's already happened. So he decided not to do that, which is unusual. Billy Collum is not really a friend of Rangers, so... I'm, I'm, I'm going to say that Willie Collum's not really a friend of anyone. It doesn't matter what game that Willie Collum is refereeing. I've said it time and time again. I don't get that he's, uh, you know, all against us. I think that Willie Collum wants the game to be all about him, him being in charge. As I say, I've said I've went over and over again, and this is another case of... This is the Willie Collum show. You're all going to be talking about my decisions, but I'm right and yous are all wrong, and that's the, that's the end of it. So again, you never know what you're going to get in Willie Collum's the the, the referee, but uh, I think he he loves being the centre of attention. Yeah, I mean, like the Clark challenge, I've seen it given as no foul. I've seen it given as a yellow. I've seen it given as no cards. I've seen it given as a red as well. So you've got the whole gambit there. Yeah, we'll we'll get into the fallout after the game. Anyway. The last chance of the game, because of all the VAR checks, the lots of injury time, and on the 51st minute, Johnson Johnson had their first chance of the, the half. Uh, they had a great fed ball through our defence to go 1v1. McGregor comes out, the attacker rounds him, goes to take a shot and kicks the turf. <laughs> Out of everything that happened in this game, I don't think that's been highlighted enough. I know, it was an absolute howler, Derek, let's, let's be honest. What the guy done was fantastic. His control, his judgment, everything that, that he done to get the ball past McGregor, apart from going for the shot, and that was an absolute howler. Thank goodness, that's all, all I can say. But as you say, Derek, there's still been much said about that, but it was a howler. Yeah. A subdued performance in the second half. We were clearly on top, got a goal. Middle to final third was decent. Once again, the final ball severely lacking. Yeah. Yeah. As you said, Ryan Jack did come off. He came at half time. Lundstrom came on. Apparently, he did take a knock as well. He had a gash below his knee where he got, did get hit with the studs. But I'm pretty sure, as you suggested, that I yeah. think the oh, yellow cards did have a bit of an influence on that decision. Yeah. 51st minute, there was a chance of a lovely move with Morelos to Tillman, who puts a lovely through ball into the box for Kent, who has a shot on the right and saved by the keeper. And then not long after that, on the 57th minute, we went 2 0 up with Kamara scoring. Kent to Cantwell on the left, going inwards. Cantwell plays a forward ball to Morelos, who has a lovely flick into the box for Kamara on the left, who has a shot and puts it past the keeper. Just an all round lovely move. Fantastic goal, Derek. Great team play as well. Just before that, I was watching Cantwell and I thought he was, you know, he was in the mood for, for going forward. That's where it all started. He looks as if he can sniff out a chance. His uh, passing was fantastic. And as you say, fantastic flick by Alfredo Morelos. That's Alfredo Morelos that we like to see as well as scoring goals, linking up and fantastic ball to Kamara and the goal that he scored. Fantastic finish. And, you know, that was the game put to bed at that point, I thought. Yeah. Just after that, Cantwell got subbed off for Sakala on the 62nd minute. Sakala having an instant chance because on the 63rd minute, it was a free kick whipped to the near side from the right. Sakala with his first touch and heads it over the bar. If he had put it on target, I'm pretty sure that was going to be going in. Yep. The only real chance for St Johnston on the 66th minute, there was a corner in from them from the left, a diving header in the box and a diving save by McGregor to stop the ball sneaking into the bottom right corner. 72nd minute, Morelis, Ken and Tillman off, Julak, Wright and Hadji coming on. That was him out for exactly one year and one week for Hadji. So yeah. good to see him getting some minutes and coming yeah. back. And he, yeah. he did get a massive ovation. Yeah, that, you know, as Derek has. Uh, when you put it like that, that's a whole huge amount of time to be out, no, no playing football. So I delighted to see him getting back fit. Yep. Yeah. And we had a chance in the 86th minute, which rounded out the game. Lovely piece of play from Hadji, picking the ball up on the edge of the box. And a superb ball to the Sakala on the right-hand side of the box. Has a shot, deflected, and it was sneaking into the bottom right corner. But again, a great save from the keeper. Yeah. And that's how full time was. So, great three points there. Glad of, of that. It could have been another banana skin, but we got through the game. It was perfunctory, if not flashy, but we'd done the job. Exactly, Derek. Clean sheet again, thankfully. There was a, a lot of positives. Cantwell had a great game, considering he's not played a lot of football, Derek, until he went off. As you say, the only thing that blighted the, the whole game for us was those things that happened with the referee rather than the, than you know the game itself. So just getting into the, the fallout from the VAR, because there always is fallout when it comes to our games. It doesn't matter. I'm not talking about this fucking nutter lint that's on, on Twitter. He's just an absolute maniac. But I'm talking about the mainstream media. 
Of course, the VAR decisions bore the big talking points, non-stop in the media from the usual suspects claiming Clark should never have been sent off, Jack should have been, as well as it not being a penalty, even to the extent that former Aberdeen player who was interviewed by Sky Sports even went as far as saying, not only should Jack have been sent off, St Johnston should have got a penalty from the instant, <laughs> which took place inside the St Johnston box. Derek, I hadn't seen it. It was you that sent me the link to it and... I had to look at it a few times, you know, that way that that you see something and you thought that's bound to be, you know, somebody taking the mic, it's bound to be a a parody account, but no, it wasn't, it was just another player of a certain ex-teams showing their sheer hatred of each other and trying to make stuff up, it was, it was absolute farcical and the fact that Sky Sports or whoever interviewed them for it didn't at the time challenge him on it or correct him I think is hilarious as well Derek I mean it was live and he did admit his mistake afterwards I think he tried to double down on it as well but I mean I'd seen some Uh Celtic fans saying that uh, before the pundit had even said that but for a pundit to say that is absolutely astonishing Celtic fans saying it is clear they're fucking stupid they're biased you know that's that's by the by but for a pundit to come away with that it shows nothing but a clear (laughs) agenda against us you know Absolutely hilarious, Derek. So. Uh, this this country's football is an absolute joke. If it's not the the governing body with the TV deals, it's the the actual pundits. It's and no wonder Sky take the piss out of us with their their shitty deals when they get pundits like that on. But however, what was more incredible is the fact that St Johnson did appeal Clark's red card, and on appeal it was downgraded to back to a yellow. So, I mean, that's an absolute disgrace. It means not only has the referee made a decision, VAR have made the yep. same decision, but what now has happened is it's been refereed a third time to yep. change the first two decisions. What is the point then? Exactly. It makes a complete mockery of everything, Derek. So, there's going to be an influx now. They've set a precedent that it doesn't matter if something is anything that's... Uh, agreed with by a referee in VAR if a team don't like the decision they're going to appeal so they've uh, you know that's that's them it's their own fault if they're going to be getting inundated with these things now because that by the looks of that they've completely turned their back on the referee and VAR and made up their own decision anyway So what they're ultimately saying is that the referee and the panel in VAR were wrong or what they're saying is the referee was wrong, VAR tried to overturn it, and the referee ignored them. So that means the referee shouldn't be refereeing another game if that's the case, because he's clearly inept or biased, one of the two. We, well, we, we know which uh, Celtic fans will try and go on, but that's what they're ultimately saying there. It's, bizarre. It's completely bizarre. It completely undermines everything, like I said, Derek, but only in this country would that happen, surely. You, you, you don't hear about things like this in any other country that's got VAR, but no in Scotland, it's got to be overturned. Absolutely incredible. One thing I did notice, though, Ross McCrory got a straight red card the other night for an, a clear elbow. It was a straight red card. I don't know what they were thinking, what he was thinking about and the, their fans were thinking about. They appealed it and they lost the appeal. So that was a, a, a kind of they went against what they what they've already just done there. So, but anyway, enough of that game because we've got from VAR decisions to even more VAR decisions this, in this game, Dave. Oh my God, it was Wednesday the first of February. It was a fantastic 3-0 win away against Hearts in the Premiership. The best performance of the season out with the PSV game. Dave, take it away. It was, yep, Derek, you've you've got it right. Certainly by far the best performance of Michael Beale's tenure so far. Went away to Tyne Castle, Derek. We know there'd been a lot said. The Hearts fans, the management were all getting wound up by what Michael Beale had said. And I was expecting a really tough game here and what turned out to be a potentially really tough game was just a complete masterclass by us from the whole team right the way from their goalkeeper right up to Alfredo Morelos up front and the forwards tremendous the team that Michael Beale put out was McGregor, Tavernier, Goldson, Davies, Barisic, Lundstrom, Kamara, Tillman, Kent, Fashion, Sakala and Alfredo Morelos on the bench. McLaughlin, Jack, Cholak, Cantwell, Sands, Wright, King, Devine and Lowry. And, I mean, Derek, it started off, we were on the front foot straight away. You know, for the first sort of 
six or seven minutes. We just had the ball. Hearts couldn't even get on the ball at certain stages. We were playing it about. We were going forward on the sixth minute. We had the ball in the back of the net, which was to be the first of one of the VAR decision goals that we didn't get. And it was Alfredo Morelos who scored. It was a wide cross fashion Sakala, but it was offside, Derek. You can see quite clearly that it was offside. If he'd have timed his run just ever so slightly, you'd text me at the time going absolutely mental, saying that he should be doing better because I know I was just waiting on it. Any time that Alfie has any kind of nightmare, I just wait on the on, on the text coming in for you, Derek. But he should have done better. He was clearly offside, so we can let them off that. But we only had to wait three minutes later for Rangers to take the lead and of course it had to be Morelos that scored quick free kick taken on the left to Ryan Kent, he beats his man, he gets to the byline, puts in a fantastic cross to the back post, crowded penalty area but Alfredo was first to the ball, headed it, past the goalkeeper, 1-0 to Rangers, great move Derek. Absolutely lovely, and you know, I've I got a barrage of abuse from my mates and yourself, I think, just after that for Slayton Morales, and then he pops up and scores. Just on the, the offside, though, is I don't mind when a player's offside, but see when you're looking right along the line like that, yeah. and he's had five years of doing the exact same thing, I don't mind if he's going through the middle and it's, he's on the turn or something like that and he's offside, but when he's looking right down the line, there's no excuse for a player to be offside in that position. No, I, I agree with you 100%, Derek, and it was a phenomenal cross along the deck by Sakala. You see him, you know, inch perfect, and all, all he had to do was just a split second to just hold his run and he would have scored. But we took the lead on the ninth minute. Now, Derek, at this stage of the game, the man who was standing out head and shoulders above everyone in the first sort of, you know, quarter of this game was John Lundstrom. The best game I think he's had in a long time. I was I was starting to to, to, to worry about Lundstrom in certain games, but Hearts just couldn't get out of their own half. He just seemed to be able to know instinctively where the ball was going, stealing it off players constantly. It was a total thor- thorn aside. In the 13th minute, he wins the ball deep inside the Hearts half. A through ball to Alfredo inside of the box on the right-hand side. He goes for the shot, shoots wide, maybe could have uh, laid it back to Kent, who, who was running in, but as a striker, he was going for his second goal. Unfortunately, he didn't get it. And then on the 21st minute, finally, Hearts had really their, their, their one and only sort of main chance that I can remember in the first half, but it was a good chance they had, and it was when, when they broke, Barry Mackay pick, gets the ball, on his left foot, runs in, into the box I thought Hearts were going to score he hits it low, great save by McGregor by his feet and cleared thankfully by the defence and on the 27th minute quick counter attack uh, Fashion Sakala, he hits a shot but it was deflected wide, really unlucky there and then uh, just a minute later, ball in the back of the net again, Derek offside, Fashion Sakala what do you think Certainly looked as if he was possibly just off, but unlucky again. You know, it could have been another goal for us. I, th- I think, I mean, all the VAR decisions you're going to get into, they were all correct, unfortunately, yeah. in this game. Yeah. But just offside, but what a finish from him, though. It, it really was, Derek. And, and we were really go- going for it, because the next sort of five, six minutes, it was just constant pressure by, by uh, Rangers. 33rd minute, Malik Tillman across the face of the goal to Fashion Sakala. He fires a great save by the Hearts goalkeeper. But then a minute later, we make it 2-0 to Rangers. And it was so deserved because we were all over them. It was a short corner to Borna Barisic. He crosses it to the back to Connor Goldson at the back post. He heads it back across to Malik Tillman, who fires the ball into the back of the net. Again, fantastic play, instinctive from Goldson and Tillman. And Rangers 2-0 up and well-deserved a two-goal lead, Derek. I mean, Tom Miller kept on saying one from the training pitch. I don't think it was, to be honest, because <laughs> you don't float a ball that deep and it nearly going out, to be honest. So uh, it was just a, a great goal all round. Maybe a wee bit fortunate to get the ball back, but Goldson done brilliantly, and what a finish from Tillman. Fantastic. And then just there uh, before half time, Derek and Ryan Kent with an incredible shot from outside the box, strikes it off the post and out. Really un- unlucky there. Three minutes into injury time in the first half. 
John Lundstrom with a, a shot and another fantastic save by the Hearts goalkeeper. And that was a, into half time. Derek Rangers absolutely dominating that game. The pressing play off the ball was unbelievable. The best I've seen, I don't know how long. The whole team playing tremendously well. And really, bar a couple of timed runs, if we'd have went in 5-0 at half-time, Derek, nobody would have been complaining. It was just a fantastic performance so far. Yeah, I mean, I've literally put that 2-0 going on 5-0, and it was yeah. it was fantastic. Great pace, just great hunger from the team, and that's what has been lacking a lot of the time, is the hunger. You did miss me just before the half-time as well. We had a header off the bar as well, so there was another good chance, but yeah. uh, fantastic to see. Yep, fantastic. And into the second half, Derek, and straight away, you know, we were expecting maybe Hearts to come back into it, maybe have to do do some defending. It wasn't like that at all. Rangers started where they finished into the second half and Rangers were actually awarded a penalty on the 49th minute. Yet another controversial VAR decision. Uh, Ryan Kent into the box, plays a 1-2 with Alfredo Morelos. He gets to the byline, Derek, goes to cut back. There is a challenge on Kent. Referee gives the penalty but on checking VAR, it was turned. Hearts got a free kick and Ryan Kent booked for diving. What, what did you think of that, Derek? I don't think it was a penalty. I do think he was looking for it, but I don't think it was a booking either. I think he was trying to be clever and the referee, from what we've seen, he only seen one view of it from VAR and it was slowed down, which makes it look worse than it is. But he was coming at pace. So even the slightest wee clip will send you over. As I said, I think he was looking for it. He left the leg in there, but it certainly wasn't a dive. So I was absolutely raging. Derek, I, I get what you're saying. Uh, Kent was trying to be clever. He moved in, in, into the player, but he was certainly there was contact there. As you say, he was going so fast. The slightest wee bit of contact, he was going down. I thought it was a penalty. Last week, a lot of other people were saying it's not. But at the end of the day, it was overturned. We never got it, and it was still 2-0 to Rangers. But thankfully, that decision didn't go against the team's performance because they just kept going and kept going. 52nd minute, a shot from Alfredo just inside the box, straight at the goalkeeper, unfortunately. 56th minute, a through ball to Fashion Sakala. He shoots, scores, but again, on the bar, <laughs> giving his offside. And it was Alfredo Morelos. Now, D- Derek, at first glance, I thought it was Sakala that, that was offside. When they looked back at it, you could see Sakala was onside, but it was actually Alfredo Morelos with the initial we flick ball, which was quality, I would like to say. It was a f- fantastic first time through ball by Morelos, but Alfredo Morelos possibly just offside when he first touched the ball. Would you agree with that one? If they can allow the Rashford instant the other week there go, then I don't know why they can let this one go. Unfortunately, yeah, it was slightly offside, so we'll need to take that one in the chin there. Again, it was a fantastic move, and you've really got to feel for Fashion Sakal at this point, Derek, because he obviously just wasn't what w- working out for him at all. But you know, still a great move. Sixty third minute, really bizarre. Uh, Hearts goalkeeper, ex St Johnson keeper Xander Clark, having a complete nightmare. It was a, a sort of high cross put into the box. You know, it was a, a clear sort of jump up and grab by Xander Clark. He drops it right at the feet of Alfredo Morelos. He kind of gets his shot away, sees Sakala, he's gets back to goal, sees Fashion Sakala, flicks it back, and Sakala close range blasts it o- over the bar. I thought, oh, it's, it's definitely not Fashion Sakala's day because he really should have scored with that one. But in the 69th minute, we finally put the game to bed, and it was a fantastic ball over the top to fashion Sakala on the right wing. It was Conor Goldson that put the ball over to him. And then a fantastic low cross to the back post. And there was Alfredo steaming in. But another lengthy VAR check, Derek, wasn't it? It seemed to go on for forever. Finally, though, the goal stood. Alfredo ran over to the Hearts fans to get it uh, get it right up. Yeah, even although it had been quite some time since, since he scored. But an outstanding goal, Derek. But again... Having to wait on these VAR, VAR checks, I think, is taking the joy out, out of the games, isn't it? Because it really was a tremendous goal at the time. 
I was jumping up and down after it had went <laughs> went for us, but you know, certainly just fraction onside this time, so certainly the right decision. A great goal. I think you're downplaying the whole celebration there a wee bit because obviously there was a bit of controversy after it as well. It was quite funny because he was waiting and waiting and waiting. The decision <laughs> went for us, and then he just burst out and done his trademark knee slide in the Hearts box towards the Hearts fans. No gestures, no nothing. But then instantly, Neil McCann, who was on BBC Co- uh, Co-Coms, repeatedly called him an idiot for doing that. I mean, utterly bizarre from McCann because he's done it himself against Celtic oh. in that infamous 3-0 game when we won the league at, at Parkhead. I mean, I guess he was thinking maybe that Hearts fans have previous for assaulting opposition players and staff, so don't antagonise them. But it was really just stupid. Aye. Some of the comments I would have said about McCann from Rangers fans on Twitter afterwards, however, have been absolutely OTT. Yeah. I mean, Beale has even came out, had to come out and say that McCann will feel a bit silly about the comments. It does put him in a bit of a position working for RTV again, though, but I suspect it'll blow over. McCann's generally a decent guy. It's the first time he's ever said anything like that. Um, but uh, it was just bizarre from him. We've spoken about this before. I'm a huge fan of Neil McCann when he was playing and now. He's, he's always the voice of reason. He always defends the club to the hill. He's one of the better commentators and you know panellists out there. So I was uh, quite taken aback when I heard what he said because it's really out of character for him why he said that I honestly don't know he did come out and say later on that, that what he said was a bit rash so I'm hoping that there's some sort of public gesture out there we you know with him and Morelos or, or, or whatever but uh, aye, a bit uh, a bit silly there about the Neil McCann but anyway 75th minute it was the, the the subs came in Jack Cholak and Cantwell all on for Kent Tillman and Alfredo Morelos, and in the eighty fourth minute, Fasha Sakala off Scott Wright on. In the eighty seventh minute, Cholak was played in by Glenn Kamara, low shot, easily saved by the Hearts keeper. Eighty ninth minute sub, Lowry on for John Lundstrom, and then in the ninetieth minute, a great chance for Connor Goldson. From the corner, header, fantastic save by Clark and out. That easily could could have been another goal. There was seven minutes of added time, uh, Derek, but Rangers just really strolled it in the end. I've put down here an extra mention to who I thought was man of the match and by far the best game he's had in a long, long time, and that was Glenn Kamara, Derek. I thought he was absolutely sensational for us. It shows the difference in the player with, you know, the new manager coming in. I thought he was excellent. But as I say, there's not one player on the field that I didn't think had had a great game. Really unlucky for Fashion Sakala. And I don't think we'll see another game like that where we had so many disallowed goals, Derek, in the one game. But it really, really could have been 6-7, even 8-0 to Rangers. Absolutely fantastic performance. I enjoyed watching it when it was live and I enjoyed watching it twice. I've watched it back in the highlights and uh, just just tremendous. Absolutely fantastic performance by us. Yeah, just one wee last thing there, Dave, is there was a v- lengthy VAR check for Golds and a p- potential handball in the in the our box. And it was obviously clear that no penalty was given. Now, both me and you thought it was a stone oh, waller. Yeah. However... Oh when you look back in it, well, no, because it's flicked up off his thigh and then onto the underside of his arm, which he couldn't do nothing about. So it was one of these ones where, again, again. We, we said in the last game, we didn't yeah. think that would have been a penalty, but it was. Yeah. So I think slightly different though this time because it's came off himself. It's not as if he's tried to control it. It's kind of been crossed in, hits off him. But that's a, another one that Lint had a wee cream in his pants about, but never mind. But yes, Dave, that was a fantastic, performance and finally a 90 minute performance from the team exactly. we've been asking for all this season domestically we've finally got it and you know tails were high going into the next game for that one it certainly was Derek and you know especially with, with it being at Ibrox but you know as you are about to get into it was going to be a bit of a, a tough turgid affair like we always seem to have against Ross County yeah, so the next game and the final game I've got to cover was Saturday the 4th of February. It was a 2-1 win at home against Ross County in the Premiership. It was three changes from the Hearts game. We lined up McLaughlin, Tavernier, Goldson, Davis, Barisic, Jack, Lundstrom, Cantwell, Sakala, Ken and Morelos. On the subs bench were McGregor, Hadji, Cholak, Kamara, Sands, Wright, Lowry, Raskin and Tillman. So Raskin getting his first chance uh, on the bench. 
That's right, Derek, and I think we're all e- eager to see him play. Yes. So, the first half was another half where it had been all us and bar a couple of breaks from Ross County. They were making it difficult by packing their box, not giving us space, not, an allow- not an allowing us to get a clean shot off, being some d- dangerous play on occasion, but not getting that final outlet. I mean, the stats were 77% possession, 18 shots, but only three on target. Yep. which was poor. Ross County did have a chance early on in the third minute where Lundstrom gave, gave the ball away in midfield. A quick break by County into the our box on the left. A shot blocked by Tavernier. Break of the ball to the right side. The attacker picks it up and the shot blocked again and out for the corner. A few minutes later on the sixth minute, Barris had a good chance. Started off with Morelis into the box on the right, cuts it back, a diagonal to the edge of the box on the left, and Barisic hits a curler over the bar. However, unfortunately, on the 11th minute, Lundstrom had to go off injured. There was an ankle injury, and Tillman came on. So, uh, all reports are it could be quite a serious one. He's been seen in a, a, like a moon boot, yeah. hasn't he? So, yeah. But Tillman certainly came on and played a good part as well. On the 13th minute, the ball was fed to Tillman in the box. He, he delayed shooting and it was eventually blocked, cleared to the edge of the box, and Cantwell hits a first-time curler off the top of the bar. Now, really unlucky that there. You yeah. could see what he was trying to do. Yeah, totally. Ross County had a chance again on the 23rd minute. It was a free kick from them, floated into our box. A free header, but right at McLaughlin. A few chances here and there from Nothing of note to, to mention. However, we did get the goal just before half-time and it was Tillman scoring to make it 1-0. It was relentless pressure in and around the Ross County box. Just couldn't find the space. Then Morelis was brilliant holding up the ball, feeding the ball to Cantwell, who was running into the box on the left. Took a touch, was filled, kept going, get, got the ball to the touchline. A lovely dink cut back cross headed into the back of the net by Tillman. Just outstanding all round and that is the kind of, the kind of play we want from Cantwell. No, it was excellent, Derek. We just seemed to be camped inside Ross County's box. I I had a feeling that we were going to score. It was just relentless. We were managing at any time that Ross County were clearing the ball, we were able to just get back on it straight away, and it was fantastic play. Ball into Alfredo Morelos, back to goal. Cantwell makes that tremendous dart and run past him. He puts a tremendous, just we flicked through ball to him to the byline. As you say, the tackle came in. If Cantwell had went down, it would have been a penalty. He didn't. He kept control of the ball. Great feet. We dink right across the face of the goal and a fantastic header by Tillman. A tremendous goal, Derek. Yes. So, really good time to get it as game. Exactly. Yeah. So, second half, really... Uh, more of the same, but a bit concerning with giving a goal away as well. We did make a substitution on the 62nd minute, Sakala off and Kamara on. Now, people were saying that that changed the game and it, for the worse for us. I don't think it did. I just think it was a, a symptom of the way we were playing overall. Ross County had a chance just after that on the right. It was a cross in, clear to the edge of the box. A challenge was put in. They got the break of the ball and a shot by Ross County at the edge of the box, forcing McLaughlin into a good save to tip it over the bar and out for the corner. Corner came in, nothing happened, but they did get another corner on the 65th minute and they drew level from it. The corner in from the right, it was cut back, it was whipped in, the attacker at the near post rises and gets above McLaughlin who came out to meet it and the ball went in at the back of the net. McLaughlin, totally at fault there. Had he st- done a McGregor, stayed on his line, nothing would have happened. But not the first time McLaughlin has came out to meet the ball and just got a fistful of thin air. Derek, I honestly don't know what he was doing. I've I've, I've looked at it and, and looked at it. If he had a, took an, an extra step and just jumped straight up in the air with the defender, he would have plucked the ball out of the air absolutely no problems. He completely misjudged it and he dived diagonally and he went to save the ball or grab it at the player's sort of shoulder height so he wasn't even anywhere near. I, I, I've got absolutely no idea what he was doing. He completely misjudged it. For a guy who we said when he first came to Rangers, he was phenomenal at cross balls. He's completely lost it. 100% that was down to him. As you say, if he'd have stayed on his line, he would have saved it. Or like I just said there, if he'd have just went and ran out and jumped with the attacking player, he would have plucked the ball out of the air. I don't know what the hell he was thinking, Derek. Really, really poor goalkeeping. I think he, confidence-wise, is really low. We've been saying it the past few times that we've been watching him, but that was a howler, an absolute howler. Yep. So given especially the, the time of the goal and 
how this game had been transpiring. We thought, we're not going to score here. Yep. 73rd minute, lovely shot from Kent on the left side at the edge of the box. It dipped and clipped the edge of the bar. Yeah. Really unlucky, that one there. Yep. However, we did get the goal to make it 2-1 on the 75th minute, and it was Barisic. Bit of fortune as well. He had a free kick on the, the edge of the box on the right-hand side, hits off the head of the jumping defender and spins into the opposite end of the post. Really lucky there, but we'll take it any which way they come. Definitely, and it actually hit off the head of the player that scored Ross But believe it or not, huge fortune for us, Derek, but I really don't care as long as we were getting the, the three points because like you said a minute ago, if that had been about a year ago, there's absolutely no way that we would have scored the, the, the winning goal there. So it shows... We have got that relentless streak about us at the moment. And even although it was fortunate, we were still going for it. So absolutely delighted that that went in. Yes. Morelos had a shot just after that, saved by the keeper. And then a, a few substitutions on the 83rd minute. Kent Morelos and Cantwell off. Wright, Cholak and Raskin getting the last kind of 10 minutes of the game. So certainly, as I said, he wasn't involved in uh, for very long. But everything, he, he, from seeing the stats, certainly 100% stats, like pass completion and challenges he made. So um, just a, a wee taster for us and hopefully to see him uh, more soon. Derek, his first t- touch of the ball, he decided to go for it and ran and, you know, skipped past two players, ran uh, at, at the box. He decided to, to play play the ball off, but I think if it had attained on the third man, he might have been through. So, you know, straight away, I thought this is a guy who's desperate to get for- forward, going by the, the reports. That's the type of player he is. He loves running w- with the ball through, through the middle. Maybe a Barry Ferguson type player, I don't know, but certainly, We've not got that in the team at all, and he, he certainly looked confident. Don't know about the socks, though, Derek. That's got to be said. Wasn't impressed with him whatsoever. <laughs> I think if Jimmy Bell had still have been with us, there's absolutely no way that he would have got out on the pitch. We're having mostly white socks there when we're wearing a home strip. But, no, he did look impressive in the short time that we got to see him, Derek. So looking forward to, to seeing more of him. Absolutely. Just on the note of the socks, I did see a few tweets from Celtic fans saying, uh, you know, the Catholic Raskin can't get in tow with this My bloody goodness. sock thing. And I was oh, like, oh, dear, gee. I just never yeah. even engaged in that one there. Just oh, Derek. Incredible. But yeah. we got the three points in the end. It was, as you said, relentless. We did go for it in the end. We got the goal. Just I would have liked to see more up front with us. But sometimes it is difficult when an opposition puts that many players behind the ball. Derek, I'm not going to slate Ross County too too much. Malky Mackay, to be fair to him, has got them really, really well, well organised. We never have an easy game against them, ever. We, we never, ever go and have a routine game against them. It's always a hard game. They had done the same against Celtic at Parkhead not no long ago that they'd went and they'd, they'd played well. So, you know, we can't slag off teams that do that. It has to be up to us to be able to break them down. We weren't able to do that, but... As I say, a hard game and just delighted again that we managed to get away with the three points. Yes. So on the table, we've played 25, won 19, drawn four, lost two, scored 58, conceded 23, goal difference plus 35 and on 61 points. Still in second place, nine behind Celtic, 25 less goal difference. They just seem to be relentless just now, scoring goals for fun. And we're 19 ahead of Hearts. Now, I had a wee look into this before, as you know, just talking about Aberdeen previously, is that I think just before we played them, when we scored the last two the the two goals in the last minutes, they were only about four points behind us. They're now twenty nine points behind us. Right, That's incredible, yeah. incredible spin that one there. Yep. But anyway, the next games to come: it's Sunday the twelfth of February at home against Partick Thistle in the Scottish Cup round five. That's a four o'clock kickoff. Saturday the 18th of February, away against Livingston in the Premiership. That's a three o'clock kickoff. And to round out February, Sunday the 26th of February at Hamden against Celtic in the League Cup final. That's a three o'clock kickoff. So a massive run of games again. Looking forward to that one, Derek. Here's hoping that we continue keeping up and getting the winning performances, you know, until we go and play against them at Hamden. So I a lot of big games to come up. Yes, so we'll now go into the news. (laughs) 
So the first story here, as I mentioned for the St Johnston home game, Edmonston House, it opened up before the game. So they had the bar there in the fan zone. It was open with the cafe and the mega store. Looked absolutely cracking. Prices were decent. Outside, obviously, still needs a lot of work. The museum's still to open. The LED board's still to be put, put on. But I'm glad it's finally nearly done. For me, it still looks very small, especially if we're going to be putting on gigs there, Dave. Yeah, no, it is delicate. Everything looked very uh, promising. You know, we've been hearing a lot about what's going to be going on. I know there's a lot of things still to be done there. There's still a lot of things to be open. Uh, but going by what everyone was talking, it certainly is very exciting that we're going to have that venue there and we're going to be able to use it at every home game. And as you quite, quite rightly said, there's going to be gigs and stuff, stuff like that in, in there as well. So... Uh, I just hope that there's no any teething problems. There didn't seem to be anything that I hope what I heard, but uh, looks looks excellent. Yeah, well, twice has been used, obviously, and it's it's all went well so far. Yep. So, obviously, with the events that are coming up, the Rangers have just announced today with uh, there's going to be an opening gala, which is on Sunday the nineteenth of February. So there's going to be. A number of new players inducted into the Rangers Hall of Fame. It's going to be a champagne reception, three-course luxury meal, wine and a commemorative gift as well. So Rangers first team, women's team are going to be there. Uh, so prices are £120 and it's uh, suited and booted for that one if you want to yeah. go as well. There's also going to be a Night of Legends, which is on Saturday the 25th of March. So Clive Tildesley is going to be conducting a Q&A session with a number of players there from legends, Ronald De Boer, Arthur Newman, Barry Ferguson, Jack Wilshire, I don't know what he's going to be doing there. <laughs> um, oh Jap Stam as well. Uh, right, okay. So tickets are priced oh, yeah. thir- thirty-five pound for that. Yep, excellent. The first of the gigs, and it was quite obvious that who the first gigs were going to be anyway. But Saint Phoenix are going to be playing on Friday the thirty-first of March for that one there, and Callum Beatty is playing on the seventh of April as well. So good to see good Rangers men getting the the opening acts for the for the place. Exactly, Derek, and going by the success that St. Phoenix have had, and obviously they've done the song for us, which oh, still puts a tear in my eye, Derek, when I think of what it could, could have been, you know, that they've done for us get, getting to the final. Fantastic, you know, those both gigs sh- should be completely sold out, so brilliant headlining, and as you say, giving it to Rangers men as well, that's a, a really nice touch. Yes, now we just need uh, ACDC to perform there, don't we? <laughs> There you go. I see, Derek, you've spoiled that. You've spoiled, that's, that's what they're building up to. Yes. So, talking of, <laughs> so in the run up to deadline day, Rangers one morning put out, I think it was on just Friday there, they put out a tweet with a short video of our badge, the Castor badge, and the band sign from ACDC. Yes, our worst fears came true when they launched the Rangers Castor ACDC range. I mean, obvious tie ins <laughs> with the young brothers being Rangers fans, but the clothing is fucking horrendous, Dave. It really is. I mean, it looks like something oh. at a knockoff shop, doesn't it? Oh my god. Derek, it was. I don't know. It's like, see if you could say to the the social media team at Rangers, what could you possibly do and when could you possibly do it to piss off every single Rangers fan out there? And they thought, you know, transfer deadline day. That's that's what we'll do. Everybody's expecting to sign ins galore and this is when we're going to put, put it out. Derek, I don't know what they're hoping from this, what it's going to bring. I don't know anybody that is going to buy it. Maybe there is people out there that will buy it. I honestly don't know. I know there's plenty of ACDC fans that are Rangers supporters, but like you said, it's not exactly the greatest looking of stuff. I'm just baffled by it. I mean, is is there going to be a, a tie-in with the group, you know, that's going to be of major benefit to us? Are they going to appear? Are they going to, I honestly don't know. If that's all, all it is, is just because of the link that they've had. I suppose the ACDC logo is known worldwide, but I just think it's completely bizarre. I've never seen anything like it. Well, we're not the only club to have a band tie in. I think uh, West Ham done it with Iron Maiden or somebody like that. There's been a few clubs down south. AC Milan have got a t- tie in with the Rolling Stones. They've just literally released a new kind of Letterman type jacket. And as much as it's no my taste, you know, it does look a bit more classy. It looks uh, they've got like a a hybrid Rolling Stones lips with the AC Milan badge, and they've got 
the name of the song that they've got is the badge as well on the back and all that. It looks actually like something that somebody <laughs> would wear, unlike this. But not for the first time, somebody at Castor Design Team need the sack. Put it that way. Has has anyone from ACDC came out on social media or anything and made any comment about the link? Or, I don't. Or the Rangers. I, I don't think so. But <laughs> do you know what? After the success of having Harry Styles at Ibrox for the for the gig, I know that's nothing really specific to do with mm-hmm. Rangers. You would have thought that Rangers, given the fact that I think Brian Johnson's back with. If they're going to announce a date, do it at Ibrox, you know. Yeah, exactly. Or, or even get one of the band members to, to launch the, the thing. Come, I, I just don't at get... Least, at least come on a, a social media, or on a Twitter, onto the a, a official Rangers Twitter with the band, with the gear on, saying something. But it's it, it's just bizarre. It's just completely... I can't say any more about it. It's bizarre. There doesn't seem to be any official tie-in with them there doesn't seem to be any acknowledgement there doesn't seem to be anything and as you say if they, they came out and announced that they were going on tour and they were playing at Ibrox and then they brought out this kit and there they all were standing way on saying looking forward to playing at Ibrox or whatever where they said oh yeah that's maybe a, a good piece of marketing but for nothing at all it's just I, I, I don't know what to make it Derek no but Wisgrove, isn't it? <laughs> oh dear. Maybe if it's we'll a limit. Have e- e- egg in our faces, Derek, and maybe all these things will come to fru- fruition, but at this stage, it's just bizarre. I'll give Celtic their due as well, and it's a very few time that I'll, I'll say this, but they've obviously had a black top before, and they did release a, a tweet, I think it was the next day, and the headline was, back in black with one of the, the uh, lightning bolt things there, and it was re-releasing their top, so I right, think okay. that was quite witty from them, but yeah. I, uh, it's always about us, mind you, with them. So That's true, yeah, that's uh, true, true, Derek. But. Next thing here is Ra- Rangers released a video for Rappy Burns Day, and it it was the players trying to recite to him who's now the foreign and English players struggled as you would expect but there was one of Alan McGregor and he was just staring at it with a confused yeah. expression <laughs> and they kept cutting back to that in the same position it was hilarious no it was excellent Derek but do, do, you know fair, fair play to the guys that actually tried to do it because some of them were just like no no I'm not, I'm not doing it and as you say the look on McGregor's face was priceless that's his normal expression I think <laughs> And the last piece of football news here is I've got Jonathan Johansson is back coaching with us yeah. in the academy. So I think he had went back out to Finland to do some coaching, but certainly he's back here in the academy, which is good. Yeah, he is. And, you know, full support of his wife. I think she's d- d- delighted to be back as well. She had it all over her social media. Very proud wife that he's back at Rangers. Obviously a team that means a lot to her as well as him so uh, and he, you know but by all accounts Derek he was very successful when he was here the first time as one of the one of the few Pedro backroom staff that you know actually made a, a bit of a difference so hopefully he can continue with that and best of luck to him yes just on that same note as well I think it may be to replace Mark Spaulding who has left to join with Stephen Glass out in America for to be the assistant manager of Memphis 901 so huh? <laughs> okay interesting but yes uh, good luck to him out there yeah so pig dishes out dose of revenge by killing butcher who tried to slaughter it <laughs> you go for it a Chinese butcher was killed by his own pig in what appears to be a tragic case of karma. Police in Hong Kong confirmed that the 61-year-old shot the animal with a stun gun before it <laughs> regained consciousness and knocked him over. Another colleague found him dead with a meat cleaver still in his hand and an injured <laughs> left foot. It sounds like a, a, a game level in Angry Birds, Derek. It's maybe like, well, you know, Christopher Moltisanti did have a, a horror film called Cleaver. That's maybe it's right, aye, that's the correct, sequel aye. to that. Yes. Yep. So a lack of hilarity compared with last episode one, but on that note, we will end the podcast. <laughs> so certainly good results to talk about. So, um, performance-wise, certainly one good performance, but we'll take all the results every day of the week. We just need to keep plugging on, hope that Celtic slap up, and certainly keep plugging away in the Cups, which will obviously our next game. Yeah, d- definitely, Derek. It's it's promising, you know, 
that's four games we've covered. We've only conceded one goal, and really, because they are very, very poor goalkeeping blunder, it should have been four games with four clean sheets and, you know, as as, as winning them all fairly comfortably. But, uh, you know, the Hearts game was absolutely outstanding. Here's hoping that, that we can get more of the same in the next few weeks. But certainly a lot of positives there, Derek. Absolutely. So as ever, you can go to all the usual podcast outlets as well as YouTube, Facebook and Twitter to see all the other stuff that we do. So all that's left to say is thanks very much for listening and goodbye. Yep. Take care, folks. We'll be back soon. Bye bye. And the stadium erupts in red, white and blue. You've never seen anything like it. Let's go.